Hi there, my merry Vikings! Welcome to another episode of Merry Games with you. In the last episode, we looked at the Virgas. Today, it's all about Gajals, or using the more accurate pronunciation, Gyals, and Ticks. They are kind of terrifying. At least, that is how I used to see them. But if you are prepared and you know what to do, it isn't as hard anymore. So today, I will talk about the stats, strengths, and weaknesses of the Gyal and its Ticks. How to fight them, what we can get from them, and how best to farm them. There are probably other ways we can do this that I have not thought of. If any of you have different methods to my own, please do share in the comment section down below. I'd be glad to hear from all of you. A zero start gyal has 1,500 health points. In contrast, the two start gyal or level 3 gyal has 4,500 health points and double the damage values of a zero start gyal. Incredible! Just so you know, Whatever advice I give here will only apply to the level 1 Gyal as I have not tried fighting a level 3 yet. The Gyal has 4 abilities, the Fireball, the Shake, Spawn, 3 Ticks and Taunt. It is resistant to fire and immune to spirit and stagger. It is very weak to pierce damage and the weakest point is where the eggs are located. You can see them as glossy red sacs on its belly. So do aim your attacks there if you can. The Fireball is its most obvious action and attack. It deals 50 blunt and 80 fire damage. Although the Fireball looks small, when it lands, it affects a larger area than what you might expect. And players will get hit very often. However, if you are looking at it, you can recognize its body movements. It pulls its mouth in as if to take a breath before it extends its lips and spews out the fireball. If you are not looking at it, you can also hear the noise it makes when the fireball leaves its mouth followed by a second one not long after. So there is just enough time for you to dodge out of the way if you are alert. We can counter this by consuming barley wine, which gives the player some fire resistance. This is a good choice as it can be combined with the Bone Mass's Forsaken power that gives some protection against blunt damage. Overall, this is a good combination for exploring the Mistlands in general since most mobs do physical damage to players anyway. But you could use Yagluth's Forsaken power to deal with the fire damage instead. It's possible to block most of the damage with a shield. You can block some of the attack with a higher tier weapon, but only use your weapon in this way as a last resort and only against a zero start Gyal. The second attack is the Spawn 3 Ticks attack. It also has the distinctive sound of a high pitched growl followed by three loud blasts or explosions, one after the other, that announces the arrival of three ticks. Just before it releases the ticks, the Gyal raises its front end so its rear is lower. Then it lifts its dangly legs up in the air. The three ticks fall out of the gyal one after the other and rest on the ground for a few seconds before running off to find prey. Each tick has 50 health and will do 50 pierce damage every 0.5 seconds it is attached to the player. Very deadly if you don't get it off you. However, that is easy to do. Just dodge roll in any direction and it will fall off. Quickly kill it with your weapon before it reattaches itself. If you use a shield, the tick will bounce off and attack again. It is best to kill it immediately while it is coming towards you so you don't waste stamina. It is resistant to pierce and immune to spirit so using the black metal sword or frostner is more than good enough to kill it. Killing the tick gives you one blood clot and maybe a tick trophy. A three star tick will give you three blood clots but they have 150 health and do 100 pierce damage every 0.5 seconds very deadly as they will require more than one hit to kill. You could use ooze or bile bombs to kill ticks as they have persisting AOE or area of effect. The upgraded to level 4 black metal sword should still be able to do the job though. The last attack is the shake. We might see it and not realize it is an attack as it doesn't seem to affect us. However, it could damage buildings causing 20 blood damage. If you are for some reason at the same height as the girl, you could receive this amount of damage. The last ability is the taunt. It is not an attack. 
It makes a low trumpeting sound that I suspect has to do with getting enemies like diverters or skeletons or whatever enemy mob to engage it in battle. Of course, only ranged ones would have any effect against the Gyal. So, how do we kill it? The best way is by using ranged attacks. If you are just entering the Mistlands, that is likely to be the Draugr Fang Bow, upgraded to level 4, and Frost Arrows. The Draugr Fang has 56 pierce and 20 poison damage. The Frost Arrows have 26 pierce and 52 frost damage. So, 154 damage in total. When you get your hands on Carapace, you could use Carapace Arrows too. They have 72 pierce damage. Later on, you could use Magic. The Arbalest, which is a crossbow, is also another possibility, but I think it'll be difficult till you can master it, as the bolt flies fast, but the action of loading is slow, as you have to load every individual bolt, and loading takes 4 seconds and 4 stamina. However, it does a whopping 200 to 209 pierce damage, not counting the damage from the bolts. I think I prefer the Spine Snap though, which is a regular bow, so I don't have to reload. At level 4, when we are finally able to upgrade it to that, it will do 84 pierce damage and 20 spirit damage. With Frost Arrows, that could be 180 damage in total. The Gyal drops a Bile Bag and has a 30% chance of dropping a Gyal Trophy. The Bile Bag is needed to make the Jotunbane a Mistland Tier X and Bile Bombs. The most valuable commodity, however, are the ticks it drops. The blood clots we get from killing the ticks can be used to make the major healing mead, which is so useful. We can also make the Staff of Protection and the uncooked magically stuffed shroom. So, killing the Gyal, frankly, should not be a major activity unless you love Bile Bombs. Instead, I propose you strategically keep the Gyal alive as long as you can to farm ticks from it. There are three locations you can farm Gyals at. The first is to farm the Gyal at your Mistland farm in the Mistlands. Of course, that means your farm area needs to be big enough for you to run around and not be trapped. The area outside my castle where I farm my Jotun Puffs and Mage Caps fits the bill. I also have some small shelters made to hide from the Gyal when needed, and to reduce damage to my actual base. When you want to farm ticks, harvest the puffs and mage caps first. Then just keep engaging the Gyal so that it drops the ticks inside the farm area of the base. This is a good place to farm ticks if you want to avoid seekers or seeker soldiers interrupting your tick farming. Your base is likely to have walls, so seekers and seeker soldiers are less likely to enter. However, it is not the best idea as the ticks are sometimes dropped outside of the enclosed area. Plus, your base is likely to have a lot of damage to it when the farming session is over. But this is a player choice and depends on what you prefer. For the second location, you need to find a large open space near water in the Mistlands. Then, place as many wisp torches as you can in the area to remove the mist. This idea is better, I think. There is no damage to your base and you can have easy access to water to help with retarding the fire damage. Using this method means the player will be out in the open all the time. As you can see, I avoid most of the damage partly because I have my black metal shield almost always facing the right direction. It does quite a good job of blocking the fireballs. The other reason I am not suffering as much damage is because I am wet. I try to face the Gyal all the time, but I am moving backwards in a circle that dips me in the water to get wet and out again onto land. You have to be careful not to go too deep into the water or your weapon and shield will become unequipped and getting a tick stuck on you there is a bad idea. Have you noticed the difference between using the shield to block the fireball and to block the tick? Using the shield to block the fireball works excellently but using it to block the tick only prolongs the fight. Every time you successfully block the tick, you lose some stamina. If this keeps up without rest, your stamina will drain down. If you know a tick is coming, don't block. 
just kill it and raise the shield again. When the tick or ticks are dead, if a tick has grabbed onto you, roll and it will drop off. Quickly dispatch it with your black metal sword or whatever weapon. I try to be stingy with my sword swings so I can monitor my stamina. Having no stamina could be deadly. In that situation, you cannot use the shield when there are ticks around because every time a tick bounces off, you use stamina and stamina won't be able to regenerate. Imagine how much more difficult a three-star tick is going to be. One thing I noticed as I tested out this tick farming in various locations is that sometimes the gyal doesn't seem to be producing ticks. At least I didn't see them and they didn't attack me. I heard the sound the gyal makes when it drops the ticks and see some blood splatter but no ticks. I think there's a glitch sometimes. So if you have that kind of gyal, just kill it and wait for a fresh one to try again. I suspect the ticks may be dropping through the world instead of landing on the ground. The best method I believe, do correct me if any of you can suggest something better, is to lure a gyal to a nearby swamp. This is the perfect place to farm ticks from the gyal. The best reason for using the swamp is that there is no mist. The environment is also wet, making its attacks weaker. And the trees of the swamp are either not easily destroyed or cannot be destroyed by the gyal. Plus, there are many other mobs there that the gyal can focus on instead of the player. So if you have a swamp near your mistland, this might be a good idea to try. Being wet all the time, the player will have less fire damage and can hide behind the trees as well. Of course, make sure there are no abominations or raids nearby before you start. Kill any beforehand to avoid getting the gyal hurt unnecessarily. This worked very well for me. I could have kept on going till I got a few hundred blood clots, but I decided to stop when I had about 100 just from one gyal. One reason I thought the swamp is a good idea is that some mobs, like the draugas, will continue to spawn so long as their spawning points are not destroyed. So be aware of that and be careful not to destroy their spawning points. We would also get a few more blood bags, ooze and entrails without any effort involved. I've been trying to figure out how to cage the gyal and get it to produce ticks without damaging the cage. So far, I can get the gyal into the cage in the mistlands, but it is difficult to keep it there without cheating. I've managed to get a gyal into a cage and finally managed to keep it inside till I sealed it up, but I've yet to test it and see if I can get it to work effectively. But I don't really want to be the bait that makes it release the ticks. And any enemy mob I put inside the cage with it gets killed despite having some marble roofing for protection. Do any of you have any ideas as to how we can cage the gyal within the swamp and still allow the mobs there to continue to respawn and attack the gyal so it will continually drop ticks? Leave your ideas in the comments. I'm still trying to figure it out. Being able to leave it there and spawn ticks continually would be awesome. Though I must say, I did enjoy the manual farming. Well, this is the end of the episode. Thanks for staying till the end. If you liked what I did today, do subscribe and smash that like button if you haven't already done so. Bye my merry vikings, see you next time!